If you've been following my channel, then you'll know that I had a Daikin air source heat pump installed by Octopus Energy at the end of last year. You'll also probably know that I'm a little bit obsessed with Home Assistant. Well, that's what this video is all about, how I've connected the heat pump to Home Assistant and what sort of control and data that provides me with. I need to stress that this video is not a tutorial. My aim here is just to quickly show you what is possible in terms of third-party smart connectivity to your Daikin Altherma heat pump. Let me start by clarifying that I don't know if what I'm about to show you works with all Daikin heat pump models, but I have the Daikin Altherma 3 EDLA06E2V3. That has an MMI or man-machine interface which in turn has a wireless network adapter inside it so as it can connect to the internet. This is the kit provided by Octopus Energy so should be fairly standard at least in the UK for their installations. So as it is there's sadly no way to talk directly to the heat pump from Home Assistant. There's no local API available or anything like that but there is a cloud API that you can use. You'll need hacks installed in Home Assistant to start with. There's a video guide on my channel if you need to know how to install that. Make sure you don't enable experimental mode when you configure it. That's been added since I made that video and it's causing quite a bit of confusion when unexpected things start to happen. In Hacks, navigate to Integrations, Explore and Download Repositories and search for Daikin. The one you want is this one here, Daikin Residential for Altherma 3. So click on that and it brings up the README page. Now this integration actually only works with some very specific wireless adapters and you can see them listed here. I've got the BRP069A78 which is in the list. To find out your wireless adapter model number, open up your Onectra app, tap on the climate control, tap on settings and then unit down at the bottom. And then if you look at the WLAN gateway section, you can see it listed there. Once you've confirmed that your wireless adapter is compatible, then you can go ahead and download the integration, uh, which is done like this. Uh, once you've installed it, you will then need to restart Home Assistant. Once you've rebooted Home Assistant, you then need to configure the integration. So you go down to Settings, Devices and Services, Add Integration, search for Daikin Residential Controller for Altherma, and then you have to log in using the same username and password that you use to log into the app. So let's see if I can remember what that is. And is that working? Yeah, there we go. It's created a new device and I go finish. If I go down to settings, devices and services, devices, and let's see, there we go. Our therma leaving water temperature, so stuff's starting to come in already. Uh, if I look at integrations, uh, got a lot of stuff there should see it here, one device. Here it is, loads of sensors all there ready to use. So I've refreshed a couple more times and it's now got this little control here which is your climate entity. And what you can do with that is if I go to my dashboard, I can edit my dashboard, add a card of type thermostat and look at that, it's already actually added it in. So I just go save and I've got a thermostat card on my dashboard to control the heat pump. Now this cloud integration works quite reliably for me. I use the climate entity to control it and touch wood, so far they've had no outages that I've noticed. But the data in the sensors doesn't update very quickly, maybe every five minutes or so. And crucially, whilst there's a lot of data, there's a lot of missing data too. Things like water pressure in the system, the inlet water temperature, the water flow rate, the things that would be really useful to help you calculate the COP or coefficient of performance for your system. Well, there is a way to get that and it's called ESP Altherma. Now this is not a project for a total beginner. It involves building a little device that wires into a set of pins on a circuit board inside the heat pump. That little gizmo will connect to Wi-Fi and read data from the heat pump directly, sending it out to an MQTT server on your network to be picked up by Home Assistant. It can also control certain functions of your heat pump too, but I will not be covering that in this video because I haven't yet dared to try that out to be honest. 
It involves a bit of soldering and I used an ESP32 Node MCU dev board from AZ Delivery. I soldered four DuPont wires to it and then put it inside a little 3D printed case that I got from Hobby Stuff Limited on eBay. I'll put a link to the seller in the description because he makes really neat and compact cases for most ESP boards. Just make sure you order the right one for your dev board or order the dev board from him at the same time so as you can be certain it'll fit. Once you've built it, you need to program it, but before you can program it, you need somewhere for it to send the data, an MQTT broker. The easiest option is to install the Mosquito add-on in Home Assistant and create a dedicated user account in Home Assistant for use by Mosquito. You can then make a note of that username and password and also the IP address of Mosquito, which is probably the same as your Home Assistant one. I then downloaded VS Code, installed the Platform IO IDE extension, and then cloned the ESP Altherma GitHub repo. You'll need to edit a few files to get this working, starting with setup.h to add your Wi-Fi and MQTT server details. You'll also need to uncomment a definition file. I chose the Altherma ltda04-08kw.h. Then you can edit that definition file itself and start uncommenting all of the lines that correspond to the data that you want to get. Now, a lot of these don't provide any data, so I'll actually list on the screen now all of the lines that I uncommented so as you can copy that yourself. You'll then need to compile the code, plug in your ESP32 module using a USB cable and upload your code to the device. Now you're ready to install it in the heat pump itself. It should go without saying that you do this entirely at your own risk and of course make sure that the power is totally isolated first. On the main circuit board inside the heat pump is a small 5 pin header labelled X10A with pin 1 labelled in a circle. You need to connect your 4 wires from the ESP32 module to this header. Pin 1 is the 5 volt power, but check the wiring diagram on the ESP Altherma GitHub README to be certain. Here's mine all plugged in. You can see that I labelled every single wire to minimise mistakes. And here's the module hanging down, all taped up to make sure it doesn't pop open and cause a short circuit with anything. I put the heat pump back together again and powered it on and nothing exploded, so I assume all is good. The module also powered on, connected to Wi-Fi and within a few minutes was sending data to Mosquito and Home Assistant. It had picked up a new entity called Sensor.Altherma Sensors. This single sensor displays all of the various pieces of data from those lines in the definition file that you uncommented. It's great to watch them here, but you can't actually use them until you create individual template sensors that read these values. You do that in your configuration.yaml file, like I've done here, and all of the instructions on how to do this are in the ESP Altherma readme. So what do you end up with then? A lot of data. So check this out then, we've got lots and lots of useful sensors here. We've got a flow sensor which gives you the speed of water in litres per minute over time. Uh, you've got the water pressure there, um, air temperatures, loads of things. Uh, I want to draw your attention to this COP value here though, um, because it, it's a live COP value and it's, it's not that useful. Although it's interesting to see, it's not very useful. Um, what is more useful is a total COP based on energy usage over a longer period of time. So I'm also calculating live heat power output here, uh, which is based on a formula involving the inlet and outlet water temperatures and the flow speed. There is an important missing piece of data here though, and that's the power usage of the heat pump itself. The heat pump does provide a voltage reading and a current reading, but they don't appear to correlate with reality, certainly for me. So what I had to do was install a separate energy monitor. I used a Shelly Pro EM and I installed it in the consumer unit outside which feeds the heat pump and the immersion. Inside the consumer unit there are CT clamps around each of those two live wires. Now that I have all of this data, what am I going to do with it? Well, let me briefly show you heatpumpmonitor.org. Loads of people are sharing their heat pump efficiency data publicly in a leaderboard. It uses something called Emon CMS, which can either be run on a cloud hosted server or if you have a spare Raspberry Pi lying around, you can run it on that. This is the My Heat Pump app within Emon CMS. 
I've configured Home Assistant to forward a number of specific sensors onto Emon CMS and the My Heat Pump app picks that up and converts it into these nice graphs and keeps track of it for me. So if we just have a quick look here, you can see there's a couple of weeks of data here. These little dots are my COP values. You can see uh, compared to this purple line here, which is the temperature, uh, when the temperature was quite high, I was getting a, a higher COP, but as the temperature drops, you can see my COP is also dropping. Uh, then these bars here are the energy usage. So the orange part is the heat output and the blue part is the energy input. Uh, so you can obviously see as it was colder, I was using more energy. If we dive into a specific day here, it gets very interesting. You can see there's different sections. There's like a, a purpled out section here, which is when the hot water cycle was running. Uh, and then there's a line here showing the target temperature of the water that's leaving the heat pump. And you've got the red line showing the flow temperature and the green line showing the return temperature and obviously the yellow and blue sections representing the um, energy in and the heat energy out like on the uh, previous graph and you can really see um, on, on this graph in particular you can see the uh, defrost cycles um, as it was building up and then too much frost on the unit so it had to do a defrost and uh, I didn't get any heating for those few minutes uh, so this is all really useful data to uh, keep track of the performance of your heat pump so look, I could spend many hours going over all of the things I've shown you in this video in detail, but I've chosen just to give you a quick taster for now. My intention is to show you what is possible, mainly for those of you who are curious as to what you can get out of your new heat pump, or maybe you're just looking at your options before you make a purchase. I might do an in-depth tutorial on these things in the future if there's enough interest, but for now I hope you found this interesting. Please give this video a like, and don't forget to subscribe to my channel to see more from me. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.